What's going on guys? Welcome back to another fly tying tutorial. Today we're going to be tying up a little streamer here. Uh, since trout ended here at the end of September, I've been fishing for some uh, smallmouth here in the river. Um, they're starting to get really fired up. Uh, in the fall it's really good smallmouth fishing here. They're trying to feed up. They're trying to get really fat for the winter. And um, I just love tossing these big flies, uh, bigger flies, um, for the smallmouth. Uh, so this is pretty much a blend between the Predator X and kind of like a zonker. Um, it's articulated, double hooked, and um, it's a cool little compact fly. Um, it's relatively light, it pushes a lot of water, um, it's easy to turn over, and uh, it catches fish. So I'm going to get a fresh hook in the vise and we'll get going with this tutorial. So the rear hook is a Mustad Stinger. This is in a size 4. And the thread we're using is just some Vivis um, GSP, and this is a 100D. Um, I like to use the 100D when I'm working with deer hair. It's uh, less of a chance you're going to uh, break off when you're trying to put a stack of deer, uh, deer tail in, bucktail. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is just dress that hook. Um, we're going to throw in a little bit of this ripple ice fiber and peacock right on the back here. So I'm just going to grab a little bit of this and all I'm doing right now is kind of just tapering it with my scissors. So I'm just going to tie this in right on top. Just like so. Let's fold this part over. And for this you want to make it a little bit um, shorter than what your zonker is going to be here. Um, you don't want it really past it. It's like that. So we're going to be tying in our rabbit now. And for that I'm just using some black barred um, rabbit. And this is an olive variant color. Uh, you can use black. I just like uh, changing up the color to give it a little bit more contrast. Um, I've tied these in orange too to kind of mimic a um, crawfish, like a, the burnt orange color. And what I'm going to do is cut this rabbit strip and right here on the hide I'm just going to cut it kind of to a point just so it's not square. Kind of just like so. See that I kind of have it to a point. Just like so. So with this fly, I, um, I like to keep this rear zonker part about the size of the hook shank. A little bit shorter maybe. Um, this, uh, this fly, I originally tied it with one stinger hook in the front. And I found that I was getting uh, short striked a lot, so that's why I uh, I kept the hook on the second the second hook um, because I used to tie it just as a just articulated, but with uh, with one hook in the front. And I find that uh, I was just getting short striked a lot. So um, I've been fishing this one for about a week now, and it uh, it fishes a lot nicer. Um, you don't get short striked a lot. So I'm just going to tie this right on top. Try not to have it spin on me. It's like so. So for the body part, I'm just going to be using a little bit of chenille. This is just a woolly bugger chenille. It's kind of got the um, uh, like sparkle in it. Um, you could use uh, like cactus chenille or uh, palmer chenille. This is uh, this is what I had on me at the time, so this is what I've been using, and uh, it's actually been working out pretty well. But uh, you can substitute this for um, even a dubbing loop if you wanted. Um, I usually trim this down a bit too. This is pretty much just adding 
keeping the uh, bulk of the fly on the profile. So I'm just going to bring that to about two eyes behind the back of the eye, uh, mainly because I have a lot more stuff to tie in here, so I, I keep it relatively uh, short. Now I'm just going to come in and just kind of trim this stuff down a bit. I don't want too much of this hanging off. I'm just using this chenille as a, a filler, uh, you could say. But uh, I, I want this uh, rabbit strip to uh, sit flat on the top as well. So I'm just going to clean that up a bit there. Now I can pull this zonker strip over kind of just part out where I want to tie it in. Make sure it's nice and tight. The the hide and your thread obviously. So I'm just going to put some nice wraps in it without trapping too much. With this 100D uh, you don't want to put too too much pressure because you can actually cut right through the uh, the hide. So I just put about six or seven nice turns there. Then I can come in and cut that hide out and just wrench down on it then. So it's not going to go anywhere. Just like so. So at this point we're going to throw in a little bit more of that um, ripple ice fiber. We're just going to put a little bit on the bottom again, but this time I'm going to put a little bit more and I'm actually going to put a little, I'm going to try to put this in as a V, so it's like that, so I have a little bit on each side. Um, I don't want to put right on the middle. I want to try to uh, have a little bit on each side if possible. So I'm just going to come in with my scissors again and kind of just taper this out. This stuff's actually really easy to work with. It's pretty cool stuff too. If you haven't tried it yet with streamers, definitely should give it a go. So I'm just going to throw this kind of on the bottom on the side. Just like so kind of on the bottom on the side. Now I'm just going to tie that in with like two or three nice tight wraps. I'm going to grab this part, pull it underneath the hook, and have it come out on this side. So you can see it's kind of like a V on the bottom. Then I can actually just come in and just clean this up a little bit more. You want it pretty much to come to the meet the back of where you tied in the um, other ripple fiber. So at this point I'm just going to grab a little bit of super glue, put it on that head, and just make some thread wraps over that because we are going to be tying in one more thing, which is going to be some bucktail. And we're just going to be using some black bucktail. And I'm just going to take one little stack here, probably about a half a pencil. And all this is, is just going to help um, with the taper, with the, uh, the front part of the fly. This is going to make it uh, taper a little bit easier and uh, look more natural in the water. So it's not a hard, big head than just a little, um, kind of like your traditional, um, kind of zonker style with a long tail than a, um, a big head. I kind of want this almost more like a bait fish. Um, so I want it to taper. So I'm just gonna grab a little, little clump here. I want it to come right underneath. 
and I want this to come to about the back of the uh, the zonker strip. So I'm just going to tie this in nice and tight. I can come with my scissors and cut out this bucktail. Just like that. Make sure that's right on the bottom. Kind of just build this up. You're going to have a big, a big head here regardless because uh, you're tying in bucktail and a uh, a rabbit strip so that hide adds to the bulk. So I'm just going to put a whip finish in there, cinch that down, cut that out. I'm just going to grab a little bit of Loon, Loon Outdoors Thin. Just throw that right on this head here. Make a nice little shiny head. Then I'm going to cure that with the light. Then we'll be done for the back section. So the front hook, we're just using the Partridge Predator X, and this is in a one aught. And uh, I'm using the same thread. I've already dressed the hook. Um, for the articu articulation wire, I'm just going to be using some eight pound fluorocarbon. Um, I just find that uh, with this, I'm not fighting big, big fish, and um, I think the uh, the fluorocarbon works pretty well, actually. Um, you can use wire if that's your preference, um, but for these smallmouth flies, I think uh, eight, ten pound fluorocarbon is just perfect. So what I'm going to do is actually just throw that through my rear section. I'm just going to cut that. We're going to throw a bead in here. This is a 6 mil Otter Valley Outfitters acrylic bead. I'm just going to put one. So I'm just going to slide that through. I'm just going to put this right on top, then I can pull it to my desired length, which is going to be about right there. So I'm just going to tie this in nice and tight, bring this part up. I'm going to bring this part up till about I have an eighth of an inch just like that. I'm just going to grab that wire or the uh, the fluorocarbon and just fold it over itself so it's not going to pull out. And I've uh, I've caught up to three, three and a half pound smallmouth on this and I've never had a, uh, a problem with this fluorocarbon. Um, no nicks or anything like that so it, uh, it works pretty well. So I'm just going to throw a little bit of super glue on there just to add a little, little bit more strength. We're going to come back down and we're going to tie in our replace fiber. And this one I'm going to do um, V style as well. Um, because I don't want to have it straight down um, underneath the uh, the wire there. So I'm just going to grab a little stack here. And I'm just going to tie that right underneath like how I did the front section. So that right underneath on an angle 
then when you pull this over, it kind of just V's out for, for you. Just like that. You can see that it um, kind of V's around that bead. And I'm just going to kind of clean this stuff up. It's kind of help with the taper into that the back fly. Just like that. Beauty. Now we're going to grab our same zonker strip. Prep it the exact same. Just going to cut this a little point in the hide. So when I'm tying this in, I want the end of this hide to sit right pretty much a little bit um, in front of the uh, the last fly, the rear end. Because I don't want it to, I don't want, you don't want it to overlap. Um, this is just a kind of like a bridge filler between the two um, flies. It helps with the uh, taper and the whole um, proportion of the fly. So I'm just going to tie that in. And I'm not putting tight wraps. I'm putting uh, moderate pressure on them just so I don't cut through that hide. Just like so. Um, we're going to come in with the same chenille. It's the Wooly Bugger chenille. Tie that in. And on this one I'm going to use even less of a body because we're going to be tying in two stacks of bucktail than the head. So I'm just going to make about four turns there. Tie that down nice and tight. like that then I like to come in again and just trim all this out pull this rabbit strip over part it so it's nice tie-in Cut that out. Then you can really wrench down on that. Make sure it's not going to pull out on you. I'm going to put a little bit of super glue on that. I just like to just put some thread wraps over it. So we're going to put two stacks of bucktail. One's going to be pretty much right at the end of this uh, this bump. Then we're going to have one more little one. Then we're going to have the um, the head. So we're going to be using the same bucktail. It's the black. And this time I'm going to use a piece um, about the, si the, width, the width of a pencil. So I'm just getting all the fluffies off and stuff. And as far as the length of this, I like to keep it um, almost midway to this back fly. 
so once it it has a taper um, it will just kind of look uh, natural um, like like a bait fish um, so yeah I like to keep these to about there to about um, the bulk of it's going to be the back of the hook and the um, the bridge part then it's just going to taper back into that back fly so this first one's our our bigger one I'm just going to roll that come in with your nail kind and spread it out just like so make sure that's nice and tight down in there then you can come in and cut it out the butts try to get as close as possible keep that bulk down that I'm gonna come in with a little bit more super glue Just put that right over those wraps just like that now we're gonna come with one more stack here and I'm gonna put about the uh, the same width just about a pencil just like that I'm just gonna get all the fluffies out and all the longer fibers I have a garbage right here that's why when I'm turning it throwing it all out so this one's gonna be um, a little bit shorter than the first one um, obviously to help with that taper and with this one what I actually like to do is put this kind of on top almost as you can see it's kind of right on top then I like to grab another stack and just put another little um, short stack down there. So I'm just going to come in again, trying to get as close as possible. I'm just going to grab a nice little, about a half a half a pencil stack, and put it right on the bottom. instead of trying to uh, try to roll it just a little bit easier just like so then come in with my scissors and cut these butts out nice and close and ideally you want to be pretty much right at the uh, the back of the eye there so you have room to throw your stacked head in just like so Now, instead of lateral scales, what I like to tie in is this ripple, um, the ripple fiber, and I actually like to use this um, as the um, lateral line rather than actual uh, lateral scales. So with this one, I like to go a little bit heavier. And what I like to do is just grab, grab a piece, then just fold it in half, and um, tie it in. Just 
then ideally um, it should just be kind of like right to here. To the front flat, I'll show you on the other side. So I grabbed probably about 10 strands or so. So when you fold it over, there's 20. And it's, uh, it adds a nice little bit more flash and it just adds into the whole um, concept of the ripple fiber. So you can also just do it like this, tie that in. Then just fold this part over. You want to have a little gap here just so you have something to tie into. Right there. Just like so. And I'm just going to make a couple more wraps there. And it's looking pretty good. So for the head, we're just going to be using some. Senyo's laser dub. This is just black. And we're just going to do a simple 50 50 blend stack. Right now, I'm just kind of pulling these in my fingers, getting them all aligned. So we're just going to tie these. Right in 50 50. Make sure it's kind of half and half so I can get your th um, nail in there and move that. And um, I always put a littler stack on the bottom. This looks like a pretty big fly right now, but once you put that uh, fish skull mask on there, it uh, pushes everything. So I'm just going to put another 50-50 stack on the bottom. Making sure everything is proportion. I can just kind of pull that back, bring my thread up, pull it through where the gap is, and just throw my wraps in front of it. Now we're going to come in and whip finish, brush it out, and then we can get a, a head on here. Try not to catch any of that stuff. Put one more. Make sure that's nice and tight. Then we can just brush this out. Make sure it's looking all how we want it. So this is a pretty big fly. Um, I'd say it's about five and a half, about five, five and a half inches. And um, that's perfect for right now in the fall. Um, these fish are keen in on the bigger, the bigger bait fish, so. Um, I like it a little bit bigger. That's why I put the uh, the second hook on there, just because I was getting short striked. Um, because how long it actually is, and I only have a one knot in the front, so uh, decided to put that second one on there. So for the uh, the fish mask, we're just gonna put a number seven. See so yeah, how that's gonna go on there first. To push it up. So the easiest way that I find to put these fish masks actually on is I use this um, Ultra Gel. I'm going to pull back here, put some around where it's going to go. And um, 
Like, I'm so confident in this technique. Um, I don't even have to put thread wraps in front of this, but I do anyway. And I just put a little bit inside the actual head. Now we're just going to slide this on, kind of pull all this, slide this on. And you're going to get some that comes out the front. That's okay. Now we're just going to push that there without gluing my finger. Make sure it's straight. Kind of hold it there for about 10 seconds or so. It should be good. So you can just kind of come in here and build up that little head. You have a little super glue on the on the eye, but once you get in the water, you won't even see it. So it's going to be rock solid. Um, this head's not going to go anywhere. Just like that. Now for our eyes, we're just going to throw some uh, seven mil eyes in. These are just the uh, ice ones. If I can get them out of the package. So I like to use this super glue again. Just uh, put a little bit on there. Spread it around. And throw that eye on. Then if you just leave it, it will um, dry. Then once it's actually dry, like I'll let it dry for a bit, um, like 20 minutes or so. Then once it's actually dry, I'll come in and just put some uh, Loon Outdoors um, UV clear fly finish on there. Then it will be good to fish. So I hope you liked today's video guys. I know you guys have been asking me for some more streamers and um, I have a couple more coming. Um, I hope you like this one. It's, uh, it's an awesome little uh, predator fly. Um, I use it a lot for smallmouth like I mentioned, but it can also work for largemouth and pike um, and even walleye. I have some walleye in this uh, river that I fish with these flies and uh, yeah, smash some walleye on them too. Not big, about 20 inches, but um, a lot of fish will uh, will hit it. So uh, that's pretty much what it looks like when it's wet. It's like that, and the got the little rabbit coming out, and uh, this ripple fiber, ripple ice fiber is awesome. If you guys have not tried it yet, I definitely recommend picking some up if you're into uh, tying streamers. Hopefully today's video guys, if you have any comments, questions, anything like that, drop that down in the um, comment section below. If you want to see all these materials, the list of all the materials that I used, uh, you can check that in the description. Subscribe if you haven't yet. Thanks a lot again for watching guys and we'll see you in the next one.